Okay, so I'm gonna do some soda rockets. Okay, this is the, the classic Diet Coke and Mentos. So um, you can easily do this at home. This is a launcher, it's a tube geyser. Okay, but you can also use an index card. And if you just curl it like that, put your um, Mentos in there, right? And then hold it over here, and I'll actually show this. And then you just like, pull it away, and we'll also go in. You can also just hold them and flip it in. Okay, so I'm going to pause this. So once again, I have my container, I have my Diet Coke, and I have my Mentos in my launcher. Okay, and the Mentos that I have are the regular ones that are um, mint flavored. Okay. okay, so now I'm holding the camera. I have my Mentos geyser in here. I have my Mentos in there. And in three, two, one. Okay, our next one is cleaning dirty, dirty pennies. Okay, so I have some pennies which are kind of dirty. Okay, um, I have a cup. I have some salt. And I have some vinegar. So all I'm doing is I'm just going to put some vinegar in here. Okay. I'm going to sprinkle some salt in there and mix it. And mix it. Make sure it dissolves. I'm going to add a little more vinegar. Okay. And then all you do is you take your penny and you put it into the salty vinegar and it comes out a lot cleaner. Okay, I'm going to do this again with a different one. Notice how it's dirty before. You put it in, rub it a little bit and it's clean now it's actually pretty cool so what's happening is the salt and the vinegar take away that tarnish that's been on your old pennies okay this one too and they become shiny again so it's a quick a little experiment okay and you can actually clean your pennies all right my next one is to make homemade bubble solution. So I have a container and a Tupperware. Okay. I have some water. Okay. I have a one cup measuring cup. I have a quarter of a cup measuring cup. I have dish soap. And I have corn syrup. I also have some things to hopefully blow some bubbles. So I have some old cookie cutters. And I have um, this as well. And I also need a spoon. All right, so first thing, put four cups of water either into a jar or into here. And I'm going to put it into here. One, two. And as always, I just have to tilt. Sorry about that. Three. Then I need one cup of my dish soap. So I'm gonna use this up. Um, yep, so that's about a cup. Okay, pour it in. And then I need a quarter of a cup of corn syrup. I have the light corn syrup and it's brand new, but I mean, you probably have this at home if anybody cooks at home. And it's very, very gloopy. So it's actually pretty cool. And you just pour that in as well. All right, so those are the three ingredients. All right, it's easier if you have like a jug to mix it in, but I'm just going to mix it with my spoon. Just make sure that all the stuff gets really mixed up. So I'm just going back and forth. Um, if you have a larger spoon, you can also do that. But I'm just showing you 
just mix it up but it's an easy recipe um if you have, even if you have an old big soda bottle right you can actually put all the ingredients in there and then shake it up okay so i'm just making sure that everything is all mixed in hopefully it works. I mean, it's already a bubbly because of the dish soap, but you want to make it so that you can actually blow bubbles with it. All right, so let's give it a try. So I'm going to try this one first. It's almost like a wand. So I'm going to lift it up. Okay. I'm just going to mix it up a little more. Hold on. I'm going to try this one. yeah okay so you have to just go into it and okay so i made a bubbles with this and it works kind of like real a bubble solution obviously i'm a bad bad bubble maker there we go And then you can always store this, right? And actually use it. Um, I just wanna see why this one isn't working. Oh, all right. Have it. I have two of them. All right, it actually works. Okay, so just with trial and error and have fun blowing some homemade bubbles. Okay, our next activity is called Witch's Brew. I have a tray, I have an empty jar, I have some vinegar, okay. I have food coloring, I have baking soda, and I have a spoon. I also have some dish soap. All right, and I have some dish soap as well. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to fill my jar halfway with vinegar. Okay. I'm going to move this just a little lower. Okay. I'm going to add some food coloring. I'm going to put um, red. So I'm going to add a few drops. Okay. And I'll just swirl it around. All right. Next, I'm going to add some of my dish soap. Okay. And then here comes the best part. I am going to put some baking soda in. And as you can see, it starts to puff up. But if I want to change the colors of it, I'm going to put some green into this cup, put some vinegar into it, and then pour it in as well. Okay, so watch this, and I will also stir, so I'm going to do that. And then if you stir it, it's kind of like a witch's brew, it really just gushes out. Make sure you have a tray. Okay, and the baking soda reacts with the vinegar. And you can keep doing this. You can keep adding um, baking soda, stirring it in, and the vinegar. So this is just something fun, okay? And it's a chemical reaction, all right? So I just wanted to show you that. Okay, so this one is making your own rock candy. So the ingredients are very easy. I have two cups of water. I have sugar and I'll need five cups of it. I have some bamboo bamboo skewers um, and I have two jars and two clothes pants. Um, this one you will need the stove so I have a um, medium sized pot okay and the first thing you do is you pour in two cups of water into your pot and you put it on medium 
heat. Now as that starts to warm up, I'm going to scoop in and slowly add my five cups of the sugar. I'm also going to get a spoon to mix it up. And if you want to add food coloring, you can. Um, that would be at the end. So I've already put one scoop in. Here's my second scoop. Here's my third scoop. I'm going to hold off on the fourth and I'm going to stir this a little bit. So you're making a very, very sugary syrup. Okay. I'm going to add my fourth cup and then my fifth cup. Now I will sprinkle some on this paper towel I have down here. Okay, and I'm going to move the sugar out of the way. And I have my two skewers. I'm going to moisten them. And I'm going to roll them in some sugar. Okay, this will help your rock candy grow onto the stick. Okay, and I'm going to move them here to dry. And notice how I left the top um, without sugar, okay? I'm just going to scroll the bottom, okay? So this top has no sugar. This has sugar on it. I'm going to leave it to dry, okay? And it's almost like um, the starting point for the sugar to grow. All right, so I'm going to mix this until it turns into a low boil. Okay. Okay, so it's been about eight minutes and it's at a low boil. Okay, so I'm stirring it a bit. I'm going to add some green food coloring. Okay, just a few drops. And then I'm going to mix it up. And as you can see, it's a low boil. You might want to have it a little lower. So I'm going to lower the heat and it turns green. It is a lot thicker. Okay. After you add the food coloring, just make sure that it boils again. And then you take it off the heat and wait for it to cool. Okay. So it's a low boil. This is a low a boil. Okay. Nice. And it's a bit thicker than plain old water. Okay. So I'm going to turn off the heat and let it cool. Okay. So I'm just going to put it right here. Okay. Okay. So this is cooled. I'm going to pour it into my measuring cup. And you can notice that it's very, very, very viscous. Thick. I'm going to pour it into my two jars. So one. And two. And let me pour the rest of it in. So it actually cooled for about half an hour and 40 minutes. It's actually still warm but it's cool enough to pour it into the jars. Okay, and I'm just gonna level them off. All right. So now, um, these are actually still a little warm. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and put them in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes and I'll come right back. Okay, so I have cooled these off and they're out of the fridge and now I can touch them and there's no warmth at all. And now for our last thing we have to do is I have my sugar coated bamboo sticks, okay? And my clothes pin. And I'm going to 
put this in, not all the way so it touches at the bottom, just up before, and then I'm going to put the clothespin like that, and it will hold it in place. Okay, so that is an easy way to do that. Okay, you want to try to have it not touching the bottom, okay, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to do it on this one as well. Make sure that your bamboo stick is dry so that the sugar crystals are on it. And I'm going to do this one. So it's just like that. And, oops. There we go. Perfect. Now, you take a paper towel. And you cover it, okay, just like that. And you can leave it out on your kitchen counter and check it after the first day, and you should have crystals. So I'll actually show you after the first day. And then you can grow them up to a week. And then you just pull out the stick, and you can eat it. Okay, so it's been about a day, and we're looking at our crystals, our rock candy. Now, you, you wouldn't actually pull it out when you um, look at it. I would just look at it, you know, sideways. But I'm going to pull one of them out, and hopefully we can see. Yeah, cool. It's actually working. Okay? So that when we put this in, it just had a thin layer of sugar. Um, and now it actually has the green. And if you keep it in here for about a week, it will end up being a nice clump of rock candy. Um, if you look closely... You can also see that it's growing in the jar as well, so you might be able to um, knock that out and actually eat it as well. Okay, and I'm going to put this back, and I'm going to check on my other one. Okay, here is my other one. And this one is also growing as well. Um, you'll notice that there's a nice crystals in it, as in the... Um, a jar also those you can actually knock out after it's done and eat them as well okay so i would give it about another five days six days or whatever and then you can check and i just keep these on my kitchen counter and good luck okay this last one is called magic mud and you need a few ingredients but it does take some time so this one is definitely for older students and um, or else you can ask your parents so you need a bunch of potatoes okay so I have a bunch of them here okay and you either have to cut them up or put them in the food processor so I happen to have one over here a food processor I'm going to cut up my potatoes like this just to make smaller chunks put them in, ask for help, okay? And this is an old one, so it's almost like my, my science one. And I lock it into place. I can remember now, and I just pulse it. And it goes a lot faster than cutting. But if you cut it, it has to be very fine, okay? And I already cut some over here, okay? So you want to have your potatoes as small as possible, and you put them into a large bowl. So I'm going to use about 10 potatoes, okay? I'm going to cut them up, and I'll be right back. Um, the only other ingredient you will need is warm water, and then uh, eventually you'll need um, tonic water because it has quinine. Okay, so I've been stirring my potatoes, right? Here they are. It actually turns um, reddish and uh, foamy. Okay, so the liquid, so it's actually reddish. Okay, and um, that's normal. So now I have a, another bowl with a strainer in it. So I'm going to strain this out carefully. Okay, and I want to get rid of all the chunks of the potato. Okay. There you go. So it's straining out. It might take a, a little bit. 
And as you can notice, it is red. And I'm, I'm just going to press a little just to get some more of the liquid out. Then after you strain it, you'll wait about 10 minutes. Okay, and you'll start to notice something. So it's actually pretty cool. Okay, and that'll be the first part of our magical mud making. Okay, so I'm just going to squeeze out with my spoon on top. And then all this other stuff that's in the strainer is all the chopped up potatoes. And I don't actually need this again. Um, you can actually eat these. You can mash them up or else I have um, a compost pile. Right, you can actually recycle them. Okay, so that goes in there. And then we will come back in about 10 minutes. And I'll show you what happened. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes, and as you can see, there's a white layer on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour out the top layer. Okay. And as you can see, that white layer stays here. Okay, it's actually pretty cool, and it's kind of gloopy. So, and it has some impurities in it, so I'm going to put some water into it. And then mix it up just a little. Okay. Um, let me get a spoon. Mix it up a little. And as you can see, it's gloopy. So it's pretty neat. Okay. And I'm going to pour this into a jar. Okay, so that the impurities can get out. Actually, I'm going to pour it into a cup first because I don't want to lose any of it. Okay. And then into a jar. Okay. So now, once again, it will sit here and all the impurities will rise to the top. So I'll come right back on in about 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Okay, so it's actually separated out, and the white part is what we want. So I'm going to quickly pour out the junk on top. And then we are left with a nice, clean white layer. And this is the stuff that we want. So on its own, it's actually pretty cool. I'm just going to take it out and put it into this bowl just to show you. It's actually pretty neat. Okay, it's, so it's 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 actually cool on its own and all this is just from the potatoes and water. So it's actually they're pretty neat. And I'll get the, the rest of it out afterwards, but I just wanted to show you the consistency. So if you play with it right it actually runs and if you pick it up it actually kind of melts in your hand so it's kind of like a, a liquid and a solid okay so it's kind of pretty cool okay so I'm gonna stop it here I'm going to let this dry overnight and become a powder but you can actually play with this just on its own okay but I'm gonna make it um, Turn it to a powder by just leaving it out and drying it either over a day or two. And then I'll show you how to make it glow. Okay. Okay. So it's been about a day and our potato mush for the magic mud has actually dried out. Okay. So I'm going to take a nice spoonful. I'm going to put it into this jar. I'm going to add some um, tonic water. Okay, and I'll just pour it in. Actually, I'm going to add more, only because I want this to be really cool. Okay, add some tonic water. Um, I have the top. I'm going to really shake it. All right, and it's an, a nice white color. 
Okay. Um, I do have a black light bulb. I actually bought this at Home Depot. Okay. If you have a black light, um, it also works as well. And I'm going to turn off the lights and show you two pretty cool things that your potato or magic mud will actually glow. Okay, so I, I am back. Um, I have my magic mud. I have my black light in. I turned up the lights. So as you can see, this, um, if you look closely, the tonic water is actually glowing. I'm just going to try to move this light down just to make it a little better. Yeah. Okay, so it is glowing. And then your mud also glows. I have an idea. I'm going to put it over here by the stove. Okay, I'm going to move the camera. And actually, this looks a lot better. Okay, you can actually see that it's glowing. And then here, this one is also glowing as well. So it really works in the dark, and it's daytime now, but um, it does actually glow. Okay, it's actually pretty cool. It's almost like a greenish. Okay, and the tonic water also glows as well. And here is the... Okay, so that is your magic mud. So if it dries out and you put tonic water and you have a black light, it will actually glow. Okay, so um, this one is making an overnight crystal garden. And it's with some everyday household uh, items, and it's part of our kitchen chemistry. So I have some empty jars. This is an old pickle jar. This is an old jam jar. I just wash them. I have some food coloring, spoons, um, measuring cup, two one cup measuring cups. I have some warm, very warm water, and I have Epsom salts. Okay, so this one's pretty easy. So I'm first going to measure one cup of Epsom salts. And I'm just going to move my camera down just a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so here's my one cup of Epsom salts. And then I'm going to add one cup of my very warm water. Perfect. And now you take one of your spoons and you just stir it. Stir it for about one to two minutes. Okay. So I'm going to put this down so you can actually see it. Okay, so one to two minutes. Oh, and there's also, you might want to get some pebbles, like I have here, or some small pieces of sand. Okay, and I'll explain why. So you're going to grow crystals. Okay, and Epsom salts and warm water is the basic ingredient, but crystals need something to grow on. So the small pebbles or small pieces of sand actually... Um, provide like a, a landing platform for the cooling crystals. All right, so I've already been stirring for about a minute. It's still cloudy. Okay, so you, okay, so see so you, trying to dissolve as much of it as you can. All right, so I'm still stirring. You can always fast forward if you want with the stirring. Right. Almost there. I have about 20 more seconds. All right, here we go. Ten more seconds. And 
that should be good. So it still looks cloudy, but most of it has been dissolved. Okay, so I'm gonna take my jars. And I'm gonna pour, you can pour all of it in, but I'm gonna pour half and half. So I'm gonna pour like that. It's almost half about. Okay. All right. There you go. And then I'm gonna put some food coloring into it. So I'm gonna put green. Just one, two, three drops. It's pretty good. And I'm gonna put some red. All right, so I'm going to take my other clean spoon and I'm going to stir the green just like that. And then I'm going to take my other spoon and stir the red just like that so I don't mix the colors. Okay, and then I'm going to add some pebbles. So I just have a few. I'm just going to put some on the bottom of each. Okay, and it had some dirt in it, so I'm going to scoop out the dirt. Okay. All right, so that looks a lot better. Okay, and now I'm going to put these in for about 10 minutes into the freezer. Okay, and then overnight, into the refrigerator into the back of the refrigerator now you can cover them um or keep them uncovered i like covering them if they're in in the freezer and then you can uncover them if you want in the fridge and then i'll come back tomorrow and i can show you what to do after that okay so 10 minutes into the freezer and then put them in the refrigerator overnight okay okay so we are back looking at our crystals and I already poured one of them off and you can actually see that this is overnight they actually grew pretty well um, and I just poured the liquid out into a measuring cup um, you can actually grow them for more than a day, but this is just one day's worth. So what I did is I quickly take it out of the refrigerator and I just pour off the liquid slowly. And then you can actually see the crystal. So this is overnight. Okay. So you can actually grow them longer. Then you can actually... Um, scoop them out if you wanted to and um, dry off any of the extra liquid but I actually like them in the jars it actually looks pretty cool all right and notice how the pebbles are on the bottom um, you can't really see them on on the top of it but it's where the crystals grew okay so good luck growing your crystal garden